In talking about what contributes to the unique, beautiful sound of the Mini Moog, we have to address Oscillator 3. Oscillator 3 is not just our oscillator, it's also our low frequency oscillator. The low frequency oscillator is applied to various functions in the synthesizer to cause change over time uh, with a specific periodic waveform. And that is what our oscillator 3 does when we switch it into low. We have it currently switched into low. We, haven't, we don't hear anything because we don't have the modulation affecting anything yet. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn on oscillator modulation and we're going to push up the modulation wheel. You can hear the waveform, which is set to triangle, causing the pitch of the oscillators to go up and down. Now here's something interesting. As I move lower, the frequency of the modulation gets lower. And as I move higher, it gets higher. And why? Because this is an oscillator and it's being controlled by voltages from the keyboard. The keyboard's telling it to speed up or slow down to play specific notes. It's still doing that even though it's in the low mode. And that is a unique LFO function. You don't see that on a lot of other synthesizers because usually the LFO is a fixed frequency that you set with a knob. But since our LFO is actually just a full range oscillator, we get that unique, unique effect. We can turn it off. And then we control the frequency using this knob. And of course you can use that musically. Or semi-musically anyway, sorry about that. Um, we also have the ability to use the noise function. If we go to the modulation mix, we can mix the noise and oscillator three to modulate the oscillator's pitch. And that's a rare thing in synthesizers of this size to have noise able to modulate the frequency of the oscillators. That's a really cool functionality. We can also direct this wonderful setup to the filter. Right now we're hearing the triangle wave opening and closing the filter, uh, increasing and decreasing the filter cutoff frequency. We can control the speed of it. Uh, here with the oscillator pitch knob. And we can also control the wave shape, which is something we didn't do in oscillator modulation. Each waveform, uh, when in the audio range, makes a different timbre. Each waveform within the sub-audio range makes a different wave shape, a different way that the function it is controlling will behave. That's why we have different waveforms in the oscillator 3 than in oscillator 1 and 2. So there's one other thing we haven't talked about which is very, very important to the Mini Moog sound and one of the contributing factors to its fatness. What happens when we take this low frequency oscillator out of low frequency? <laughs> Now our modulation source is fast enough that it's in the audio range and it's opening and closing the filter, uh, increasing and decreasing the cutoff frequency at an extremely high rate, which we can increase. Okay, that's a cool sound and uh, who doesn't like something like that? But there's another benefit to this. This is a distortion that we're hearing. So what happens if we back it off? So that it's very, very subtle. We're basically adding high frequencies to the filter cutoff. We have 
added saturation, a richness, uh, thus far not present richness, to the sound by using this modulation source in this way. And it's one of the secrets of creating a rich, saturated fat sound. <laughs> And that is a unique factor of the Minimoog that helps give it its very distinctive and desirable sound.